Welcome back. Hollywood icon Morgan Freeman just gave a rare interview to the Times of London, and a lot of people are talking about what he said, specifically his comments about race and being black and American in 2023. Freeman says Black History Month overall is an insult. They're going to relegate my history to one month, question mark, he said. And then he said this about the term African American. Quote, I don't subscribe to that title. What does it really mean? This isn't the first time Freeman has said something like this, specifically about Black History Month. You might remember this interview from back in 2005 he did with Mike Wallace in 60 Minutes where he talked about these same topics. You're going to relegate my history to a month? Oh, come well, on. What do you do with yours? What, which month is White History Month? <laughs> no, well, no, no, come on. Tell me. Mike Wallace said he is Jewish, and then Morgan Freeman asked, well, what history is Jewish History Month? And Mike Wallace says there isn't one, nor does he want one either for the same reason. He also said, Freeman, that the only way to really improve race relations in this country is to not talk about it. Is he right? Let's welcome in now Jason Nichols, who just so happens to teach African American studies at the University of Maryland, and Ari Hoffman, who just so happens to be a Jewish American. Gentlemen, it's great to have you here. Great to be here, John. And I, I really wasn't planning on talking about that this much, and I saw we had both of you booked, and I thought you would be great to, to talk about that. And Jason, when we talk, and I, I do think that Morgan Freeman is so right in that 2005 interview, is that we talk about race too much in this country. Maybe the way we talk about it as a divisive issue, it, we talk about it too much in the wrong way. But what do you think about his comments overall? Uh, so I think his comments about, first of all, I just want to say that mass shooter uh, statistic that you went on the rant about the FBI, that actually comes from the DOJ. But anyway, uh, what he said about Black History Month is absolutely correct. Uh, the fact that it shouldn't be one month. If we lived in a perfect society, we would learn black history every month. And, and the students that I get from all over the country would have a basic knowledge of black history. They don't, uh, because they don't even get sufficient uh, learning on black history in Black History Month. So the idea that we would get away from the little bit that they do learn, uh, I think, is, is wrong. But the idea that it should be every month is absolutely correct. In terms of talking about race too much, it's really interesting that a lot of times uh, conservatives oftentimes throw that at the left, say, oh, stop talking about race. You talk about race too much. And then I read Marjorie Taylor Greene when she talked about Jack Teixeira. The first thing she led with was, he's a white male. And I looked underneath and saw and was looking for any conservative to say, hey, let's stop talking about race. But no one said it. And then, I, you know, I looked at... You know what? A lot of people did say that Marjorie Taylor Greene kind of jumped the shark on that conversation, Jason. And look, we're not as conservatives or Ari, I'm not going to don't want to put words in his mouth, but Morgan Freeman is saying this, uh, you know, that we talk about race too much. And that was my question for you about Morgan Freeman, not about conservatives or Democrats. Uh, but we'll leave it there. Ari, what do you make of what Morgan Freeman said? Well, first of all, every time I hear him speak, I just want him to be the narrator for my life. But after that, you look at what he said, and of course I agree with him 100%. Look at what has happened since the Black Lives Matter movement has really come to prominence in the U.S. Race relations have only gotten worse. Look at the riots that ensued after what happened with George Floyd. There was an opportunity where 99% of America who saw that video said this is wrong, it needs to be dealt with. And then the rioting and everything that subsequently followed was done in the name of race relations. And then speaking about the schools, they've removed so much of the curriculum, math, science, history, reading, writing, you name it, and replaced it with this critical race theory garbage. And all it's doing is telling white kids that they're racist somehow, that they created some great original sin somehow, and that's racist. Instead of actually teaching these kids anything and look at the standards in the schools, they've only gone down. So nobody's getting educated. Nobody's better off. This has been bad for everybody. Uh, and Jason, just to go back to your, your comment, yes, the FBI statistics do come from the DOJ. The DOJ is the supervising body of the FBI, and, and we, we reference those, and we, we, do, we do criticize the FBI and the DOJ sometimes, but in terms of the accuracy of the data, that's the best we have to go on right now. I didn't mean to fight you about that. I just want to make sure that we're dealing with the same, uh, same data so we can make comparisons. But just to, just to wrap this conversation up, I, I mean, I, when you look at the and there's actually data that backs this up as well. The media in general, when you look at a broad swath of the media and the main alphabet networks and the legacy newspapers, there was not as much conversation about race in those publications until President Obama got elected. And obviously that's gonna stir a new conversation about race. But my point is 
the more we talk about it, that doesn't necessarily mean we get further, we, we advance further as a country in this discussion. So how do we do that? How do we not repeat the mistakes of the past? Well, I, I personally, I, when I think about uh, racism, uh, I think of it as, uh, you know, a cancer, a disease within our society. And the only way that you, you don't get rid of a disease by ignoring it, you get rid of a disease by actually addressing it. You get rid of a disease by actually trying to treat that disease. Ignoring it only at, allows for it to metastasize and get worse. And it's uh, interesting that you bring up 2008, you bring up uh, President Obama, because I was thinking about Morgan Freeman. And I remember in 1997, in his hometown in Mississippi, one of the things that he did was he uh, went to the school district and said that he was willing to pay for their first integrated prom. They hadn't had an integrated prom. Yes, I remember that as well. It's amazing. And, and it didn't happen. They declined, and it didn't happen until 2008. So, of course, he says he doesn't want to talk about race, but, of course, he did talk about race, and rightfully so. And I think that, you know, we're better off when we actually have honest conversations. I'd love to talk to your other guest about what he thinks critical race theory actually is and what authors of critical race theory he's actually read and what curriculum he's seen critical race theory in. Well, That's we have four, uh, Jason, we have 14 seconds. I'd love to have that conversation, too. And again, I don't want to put words in Ari's mouth, but I know he's talking about the 1619 Project. He's talking how to be an, how to be an anti-racist. And these are all, and, and, and again, we're not talking about critical race theory being taught in law school. We're talking about elements of those books being taught to kids too young to really understand. We're talking about kids being separated and asked to place themselves on their uh, whatever it is, their privilege matrix. That's the type of stuff. But that's just a primer because we will have that conversation. This has been fascinating having both of you here. We appreciate uh, your candor on these issues. Ari and Jason, thank you guys. Thanks, Always John. Always a pleasure.